Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to our first Coffee with the Counselors. Today, we're going to discuss balancing student distance learning and a busy home life. So we'll get started and introduce ourselves. My name is Andrea Rodriguez, and I'm the school counselor at Garrison, San Luis Rey, and Reynolds Elementary. Um, I'm also an Oceanside School District parent. I have a daughter in seventh grade at King Middle School and three boys, um, all at Ivy and Elementary School. And I have a fifth grader, a third grader, and a second grader. Hello everybody, my name is Nicole Vergara and I'm the school counselor at Nichols in Del Rio. That's my photo on the right. That's a picture of myself, my husband, and my dog, Russell. Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Hatfield and I'm the school counselor at Palmquist and Fusat Elementary. That's my picture down there at the bottom and I have three kids, one in 12th grade, one in 10th grade, and one in 8th grade. All right, so we wanted to kick off this workshop series with talking about balancing distance learning and a busy home life. This is such a new experience for many people, so we wanted to start exploring some of the common challenges that we heard families um, reaching out to us for, and we wanted to look for ways that we can support this balance of distance learning and having a busy home life, but also supporting social and emotional needs. So we wanted to create an easy acronym to remember. So we came up with chaos. So we will focus on ways to gain control of the chaos. So C is creating priorities. H is having patience for yourself and your children. A is allowing everybody their space. O is organizing your student and home work life. And S is seek help when needed. So the C is create your priorities. During this time of distance learning, we might have multiple priorities that we're trying to juggle. We can have many competing priorities such as caring for our children, working from home, finding a job if people have lost their employment, caring for other family members, health concerns, financial concerns, bills still need to be paid. And on top of that, we are all coordinating our students distance learning. Every family and situation look different, so priorities might look different for everyone. An important thing that we can do during this time is to set our priorities for our own family situation. We wanted to bring up Maslow's hierarchy of needs during this discussion of managing priorities to highlight that everyone might be focusing on different needs during this time, and that's okay too. Abraham Maslow's theory of human motivation suggests that the higher needs come to focus once those lower needs are met. So Maslow suggested that deficiencies in these lower areas need to be addressed as well or could lead to potential stress or anxiety. As humans, we wanna make sure that we've met our basic needs and that might mean making sure food is available, making sure we're having enough sleep, um, we're concerned about our family's health or our own health, we want to make sure our safety needs are met. Um, you know, how is our housing situation? Are we living in a safe neighborhood? Um, are our kids in a safe environment while we're working? Or are they being cared for? Also, do we have employment or job security? And social belonging. Do we have family and friends that we can um, lean on or, or also a community that we belong to? And is our uh, family home environment calm and warm and this leads to other things that we can do as well. There's also one thing that we can focus on our priorities is things that we can control versus things that we can't control. There's many things that might seem out of our control right now. It can make us get easily overwhelmed if we focus on all the things that we can't control. So during this time, um, especially with the stay-at-home order, we're wondering when things are going to resume. A lot of things might seem out of control. I don't know about you guys, but when there wasn't any toilet paper, I felt like there was a lot of things out of our control. Um, we can see continued news reports um, that might make us feel overwhelmed, and that might seem out of our control as well. But we don't want to stay in that mindset, and we want to continue to focus on things that we can control, not on things that we can't control. 
this can make us feel overwhelmed and anxious if we keep focusing on the things that we can't control. So we wanna focus our attention. And so for example, the stay at home order, I can focus on my feelings, my self care, my own social distancing, instead of focusing on maybe the specific things that we can't control. Um, I can control how much time I spend watching the news or on social media versus times maybe that make me feel better and happy, like spending time with my kids. Um, with distance learning, there's a lot of things that might feel out of our control. We're all learning new things, new technology. Um, an example is my son, my both of my sons have their Zoom meetings scheduled at the same time, um, or they're giving kind of a a big workload by their teachers. That's something that I can't control, but I can control my reaction and my behavior. So I can do some organizational skills that'll help me out and help my kids out. And we're gonna actually talk about some of those organizational skills later on in the slides. Another thing is choosing our battles with our children and giving them options or choices. So giving kids some chances to choose activities, maybe like picking out their snack is a good opportunity um, to create priorities as well because they're all going through the same thing as well. Maybe they're not showing it as much as adults, but they're also going through all these changes too. So when they get to do things on their free time, that might be another choice. And we'll go over to, we'll go over more in detail of what this looks like. And we also have a workshop that's um, coming up that's communicating with children and that could help out as well. Um, so the H in chaos is having patience with yourself and your children. Most young kids will remember, oh, there's a quote that I really liked and resonated with me and it's saying, most young kids will remember how they their family home felt during the coronavirus pandemic more than anything specific about the virus. Our kids are watching us and learning about how to respond to stress and uncertainty. Let's wire them for resilience, not panic. I really liked this quote because crisis situations and significant change looks different for everyone. And it's okay to feel stressed, sad or angry or happy or maybe all of those in between. Um, we, if we can recognize our triggers and emotions and then deal with them in a healthy way or use great coping skills to help us get through a tough time, it's, this is also beneficial for our kids to see. Um, kids and adults right now in this situation are taking on new roles. So kids are expected to do schoolwork in their home environment where they were used to maybe relaxing or might have free time or this was their safe space and now they're expected to do work, um, their schoolwork. Parents and guardians are also learning the ins and outs of education where we might not have experienced that before. Um, I was helping my third grader and I realized he knew fractions in algebra. That's something that I didn't even know before. So we're all learning these new roles. Another thing is try not to compare yourself uh, with other situations and other people because everybody like we said are, have different priorities and different situations We also want to make sure that we're practicing self-care and mental health For our mental health and it's really important. So if we find ourselves being too hard on ourselves or we're not doing okay It's okay to reach out um, We have a self-care workshop coming up and we also will talk about how that looks about getting help as well um, the last thing is trying to reframe negative or self-defeating thoughts. Um, for example, we can tell ourselves, I'll never get the hang of coordinating all of this for schoolwork and my child. Um, I can't believe I'm expected to do all this and work or do these other priorities. Um, if we start thinking like that, we can get stuck in this pattern of thinking and we want to change this statement into like a statement of, empower, of empowerment. We want to empower ourselves. So we can change that and we could say, I'm really grateful and impressed that our district is providing learning opportunities for our kids during this time. This is actually something that I had to, to struggle with myself. Um, my kids, I was fortunate that their brains are still getting stimulated and they're continuing to learn rather than if my kids probably had a bunch of free time. They would probably just be playing Fortnite all day. So um, I'm appreciative of my kids' teachers and they go the extra mile and above and beyond 
Um, I know my son got some additional help when he um, was struggling on a test. So um, I changed those self-defeating thoughts into empowering thoughts. We're now moving on to the A and the A stands for allowing everyone their space. It's really important that you designate a workspace for your student and also yourself. At this workspace, you can have the student's device available, pencil, paper, and a book, whatever materials you feel your child may need for the day. This is also important for yourself as well. If you're working from home, have your own workspace where you're able to complete your work or even just pay bills. The thing I want to highlight and emphasize the most is that establishing a workspace doesn't mean you need to go out and buy a new desk or a fancy chair. While these things are extremely helpful, we understand that, that space and resources can be limited. For example, for myself, I live with many other family members and the only place I can really get any work done is my room. The issue comes when my husband isn't working he's had, and he has the day off. He loves to just lounge and it was becoming a distraction when he would be sleeping in the background of my Zoom meetings. So what I had to do was shift my little desk at a certain angle so that my closet was now the background and not my husband. And that little adjustment has really helped. After you've established that workspace, it's important that you also identify your relaxation space, a space where you know you will focus solely on yourself, not thinking about work and all the things you have to do. I really want to emphasize separate. For example, going off my own experience again, my workspace is in my bedroom and my bed is where I like to just relax and watch some TV, read a book. And because my two spaces are so close together, Sometimes I can get tempted to bring my Chromebook to bed and do work, but it's so important to keep those two separate and remind yourself that one space is for work and the other space is to relax. Lastly, communicate these boundaries with your family so everyone is aware of each other's designated spaces. Have these conversations with your child so everybody's on the same page. If the couch is my relaxation space, I would tell my child that when I'm on the couch, I'm at the couch, I'm not working. It's my time to relax and, and, and unwind. Same goes for your children. If they're, if they're in their workspace, it's time to work. By doing this, we'll be more likely to respect each other's boundaries. And when I'm, so when I'm at my desk, my husband knows not to come talk to me unless he really needs me because I've made it clear that my desk is my workspace. O is for organize your student and homework life. I want to start off first by letting you know that all of these are just ideas and it's not a one size fits all. We are all different and what works for one person may not work for someone else. But if you see something that resonates with you, you may want to add that tool to your toolbox. One idea that may help with organization is to have a master family calendar where you can put your work schedule, the kids' Zoom meetings, and any other activities for your family. Having everything in one place may help you feel less overwhelmed and help you also to keep track of everything because right now we have a lot on our plates that we're all trying to juggle. Creating a daily schedule that works for your child may also be helpful. If you search on the internet school schedules during coronavirus, you will get a ton of different schedule ideas. And the reason why there are so many different ideas out there is because we're all unique and what works for one child might not work for another child. It may be helpful to try out a couple of different types of schedules and see which one works best for your child. So I'm going to show you a couple of different school schedule ideas. Here's an example of a possible schedule that may or may not work for you. You might look at this and think to yourself, yes, where has this been all my life? This is exactly what I needed. Or you might look at this schedule and think, whoa, that will never work for me or for my child. You know you and your child best. So again, it's important to find something that works best for you and your child at your home. All of our kids are unique and different. One child might need a lot of structure with times and activities written down all day long. However, some kids work better with more flexibility where they get to pick which activity on the schedule they would like to complete first or last. The first schedule example here on the screen 
can be modified to be more or less detailed. You can customize it to fit the needs of your child. So you can add a column in this schedule to add specific times in if you want, or you can add some rows in there to include lunchtime, chores, or any other activities that you would like to add. Having to learn from home has presented parents and kids with all sorts of new challenges. One of them may be the struggle of feeling like you are always having to check in with your kids constantly every day to see if they have completed all of their assignments. You may feel like all day long you're having to ask your kids, did you finish math? Did you finish reading? Did you take your AR quiz yet? And this can create a lot of stress, friction, and power struggles with you and your child. I wanna share a part of this schedule that you might find helpful if you've been experiencing any of these issues with your child. And again, this is not a one size fits all. This is just one possible tool among many for you to explore. This calendar that you can see on the screen is actually a Google Doc that you're able to share between you and your child. With this calendar, you can start off the day by highlighting all the items that need to be completed in yellow. And as your child completes each item for that day, they then can change the highlight color from yellow to blue. Since this is a shared document, parents and caretakers can see in real time what their child is completing throughout the day. So you no longer need to ask them, did you complete your math work today? You may even want to write in this document to your child words of motivation like nice job completing the reading assignment or keep up the good work. Using the highlighting option can also be helpful for kids to feel a sense of accomplishment, as well as to help keep them organized with what they need to complete for each day. You can also directly put links to items in this calendar, such as their Zoom or Google Hangout links. As we scroll down, you can see that we added a brain break se section in it, and it's important that our kids have breaks throughout the day. What's nice about this section is that your kids can access on their own an array of brain breaks by clicking on the links directly on this document. We included some movement ideas, art and creativity ideas, and we also have some social emotional activities. As you can see under the social emotional ideas, there are some links to the websites for your school counselors. And all of our websites have lessons, activities, and tools regarding in regards to social emotional. And if you like, you are welcome to visit any of our Lee School Counselor websites and utilize any of the materials or lessons in them. As we scroll down a little more, you can see here is another possible schedule option for you. Now this calendar was made on a free website called schedulebuilder.org. And it was extremely easy and quick to use. I'm not really good with technology, but I was actually able to figure this out on my own pretty quickly. So it's nice, it's very user-friendly. What I love about this calendar is you can actually pick any kind of image to put in the background of this calendar. So you can customize it to fit your child. I just picked Spider-Man. If your kid loves Spider-Man, you could pick a Spider-Man picture. Any image you want, you can put in the background. If this is something that appeals to you, you can have your child work with you on creating this calendar. Maybe they could pick their own image or they could pick their own colors for their subjects. Um, they could really make it to fit what they want it to look like. Another neat part of this calendar is you can view the calendar in two different ways. You can use the picture that's on the screen or you can click on the link in the top left corner and you can see a listed version of everything that you put on your calendar. So you can print this out and then you can have your child either put a check mark next to the items as they complete it or they can highlight the items as they complete them. One last thing I wanna emphasize is that our kids and families are all unique. You need to find what works best for your child in your home. You may even find it helpful to see what works best for each child because they all could look very different. Some other possible organization tips are to keep all of your school materials and info in one place like your binder, your pencils, your charged iPads, 
um, whatever daily or weekly schedule you choose to use, your Zoom links and any other online website links and passwords. And also to review each morning or in the beginning of the week, the assignments and schedule that your child um, has on their, on their calendar. Our last tip is to seek help when needed. Like Ms. Andrea was saying earlier, it's really important that we do our best to meet our basic needs before we can move on to other tasks like schoolwork. We know and completely understand that this is a tough time for all of us. New challenges come up every day, and we want to make sure that those basic needs of shelter, water, clothing, food are being met, and that you all, all are safe. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you need that. For any school-specific concerns, teachers are available for office hours if you want to dis discuss any of that. Office hours could be a great time for you to touch base with your teacher, ask questions about content or activities, or even just connect. And of course, your school counselors are here to support, support you during these difficult times. All our emails for every school are here and if you're from Ivy, our amazing school counselor, Ms. Jara Romasanta, supports Ivy, so she'd be more than happy to connect with you if you need to. If you'd like to take a picture of this page so you can send us an email, uh, you're more than welcome to. Because this is such a new experience, we ourselves are trying to navigate how to best support our families, and we are also learning on the way with you all. If there is something that you still feel like you need help or support in, please let us know. Like I've said before, we're all learning on the way, even as counselors. There's no way any of us could be prepared for the challenges we have faced and will continue to face, but we are in this together and here to support you if you need us. At this time, I would like to show you where you can find all our social and emotional supports on our district website. So if you just Google um, Oceanside Unified School District, um, it'll bring you to our main page. You can go ahead and scroll down to the right hand side and click on distance learning and then look for the social emotional resources link on the left hand side. There's a variety of resources available to you if you need them. On behalf of all of the Oceanside Elementary School counselors, we want to thank you for attending our first virtual workshop. We hope that you leave this workshop not only with a few new tools to add to your toolbox, but also understanding that what we are encountering right now is very difficult and you're not alone in those feelings. We also hope that you remember to have grace and patience with yourself as you are not working from home. You are at home during a crisis trying to work. We hope that you'll be able to join us again this Thursday for our next Coffee with the Counselors virtual workshop. Our topic this Thursday is self-care for parents. During this workshop, we will discuss the challenges we have been having as a result of the coronavirus. We have all experienced different levels of trauma during this pandemic. We will be learning about how this stress affects us and our relationships, the importance of self-care, and learn different ways that we can practice self-care. Lastly, we would love to get your feedback on this workshop, which will help guide us for our future workshops. So if you have a chance to copy the link on the screen right here and um, fill out the survey, we certainly would appreciate it. Thank you. And again, we look forward to seeing you this Thursday at 4 p.m.